We're now starting Rosh Chodesh Elul, Chodesh of Tshuva, leading up to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. And I'd like to try to understand for a few minutes what exactly is the Indian of Rosh Chodesh Elul. What makes it so special? We all know Elul, Elul, Rosh Hashanah Santa would faint, but what does that mean? Why, why was it so special? You know, I don't think any of us faint when any, any of us fainted when we heard uh, the Bukhara Chodesh of Elul. So what is so significant about Elul and how can we make the most of it? Our minhagim of Elul, whether it's Slichos for Sfaradim or Tkiah Shofar for Ashkenazim, our minhagim are based on the Medjush brought by the tour in Simon Tuf Kuf Pe Aleph that says that the 40 days of Moshe Rabbeinu, where he achieved Slicha for Klai Yisrael, began on Rosh Chodesh Elul. That Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai after Matan Torah, and he spent 40 days there. Kash Baruch Hu gave him the Luchos Rishonos. He came down on Shivas Batamuz and because of the Egel Hazav, Moshe Rabbeinu broke the Luchos. Moshe Rabbeinu then went up again after Shabbat Sabbatamuz and pleaded with HaKadosh Baruch Hu on behalf of Klai Yisrael not to destroy us. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu agreed at the end of Chodesh Av, HaKadosh Baruch Hu agreed not to destroy us. He told Moshe Rabbeinu, prepare a new set of Luchos, prepare a new set. Moshe Rabbeinu fashioned them. Then HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, come up to me on the mountain. And Moshe Rabbeinu went up and uh, for another 40 days, a third set of 40 days, which ended on Yom Kippur. And Chazal say that that, 40th, that that third set of 40 days began on Rosh Chosh Elul, and that is where our Menhagim come from. The Bach over there in Simen Tafk of Pe'alef asks on this Medjish a basic uh, mathematical question, basic question of arithmetic. If you count 40 days and 40 nights, like the Psukim say, Moshe Rabbeinu was up on her Sinai 40 days and 40 nights. If you count from Rosh Chosh Elul until, until Yom Kippur, you will not get 40 days and 40 nights. Why not? Chazal tell us that Moshe Rabbeinu always went up to, up to Har Sinai in the morning. Rashi in Pashat Yisra brings it that all the aliyos of Moshe Rabbeinu were baboker. And Moshe Rabbeinu came down from Har Sinai on Yom Kippur. So if you count from Rosh Chodesh Elul in the morning, uh, 40 days. So Elul traditionally has 29 days. We don't uh, make a 30th day of Elul. It's not for Ubar. 29 days of Elul. And then 10 days of, of Tishrei. But even that 10th day is really short because Moshe Rabbeinu came down in the morning of Yom Kippur. So then you have uh, 39, and really a little bit less than 39 days. So in order to deal with this question, the Bach, uh, he makes a few points, but I want to focus on the last one. Number one, he just says that uh, it must be that Elul that year was Mu'ubar. So there were 30 days of Elul, okay? 30 days of Elul, but even if you say 30 days of Elul, you still don't have a full 40 days and 40 nights, because you have from the morning of Rosh Chodesh Elul, the morning of Rosh Chodesh Elul, through the end of Elul, okay, so that's 30 days minus a night, you still have a full night, plus, plus uh, 10 days of, you know, of the first 10 days of Tishrei, which are also not a full 10 days, because they're not the full, they're not the full uh, night and day of Yom Kippur if he came down in the morning. So the Bach adds an important Nikuda, in order to answer the resolve this question. The Bach says this, this rule that Chazal have, that Moshe Rabbeinu always went up in the morning, the Bach says that's only true when Moshe Rabbeinu went up on Sinai, Me'elav, when he went up to speak to Hashem. If Moshe Rabbeinu in Parshish Yisrael, for example, goes up to Sinai a few times in the lead up to Matan Torah, and each time he went up, he had he had messages from Klai Yisrael to Kadosh Baruch Hu. Comes to talk Kadosh Baruch Hu, you know, Klai Yisrael is excited to receive the Torah. Kol Shev De Hashem Naaseh. Great. When he went up of his own volition, that was Baboke. However, Al Pihadibu, when Akash Baruch Hu invited Moshe Rabbeinu, Ale Eli Yahara, come up to me. When, when Akash Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu, come up to me on Har Sinai, then that invitation could be extended even at night, and Moshe Rabbeinu would even go up at night. Therefore, says the Bach, these last 40 days did not begin in the morning of Rosh Chodesh Elo, but actually began the night before. And then in the night, of Lamed Av, Akash Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu to come up, and Moshe Rabbeinu began the process of going up Har Sinai already at night, and, and then he was up on Har Sinai for the full 30 days and nights of Elul, and, Bach adds, he was also up on Har Sinai until the evening of Yom Kippur. He didn't, instead of saying that he came in, down in the morning, it was the evening of Yom Kippur, and you have the full 40 days, 40 nights. That's how the Bach uh, addresses the question. Well, I want to get out of this point that the, that the Bach makes, that the way we understand Elul is not merely, it's a, it's a time to do tshuva, it's a time to prepare for Rosh Hashanah, but we should understand it as a giant invitation. It's a hazmana. That's the, the, the sort of the Bach's answer. 
is that Elul is distinguished by its invitation. It's not the same type of Alei in Lai. It's not the same type of Moshe Rabbeinu going up the mountain. It's not Moshe Rabbeinu choosing to go up. It's HaKadosh Baruch inviting him to go up. Similarly, for us, Elul is not just another time when we can spur ourselves to do Avodah Hashem, spur ourselves to get better. It's a time of invitation. Every single year, HaKadosh Baruch Hu invites us again. He says, in 40 days, it's going to be a Yom Kippur. In 40 days, it's going to be a special day, a chasada for you. It's Yom Chasun Uso, Yom Sum Chas Libo. It's going to be the day of Yom Kippur when I reconnect with you. And I'm inviting you now. You personally are the guest of honor. You are like the Chasun and Kalo invited to your own chasana. And therefore, we need to prepare. What's the difference between us spring ourselves and us being invited? Imagine a, a child who, Rahman al son, has fallen out with his parents and runs away from home. He's banished from home. They don't want to see him anymore. The child and the parents both feel terrible about this situation. Everybody wants this situation to be rectified. But it's hard for anyone to make a step forward. Everyone, re- everyone can see that the relationship is not where it's supposed to be. But nobody is comfortable enough to, to go ahead and change anything because everyone feels stifled by the tension that exists. All of us for the last almost a year, we're coming up on almost a year, have felt a terrible sense of tzara. We all understand that Klai Yisrael is being sent a message of Richuk for Kadosh Baruch Hu, and we all feel like we're not doing enough, but we're not sure how we can make it better. What, what, what could we do? What does Kadosh Baruch Hu want from us? In our mashal, if that child was then going to get married, if he would just go to his own wedding and wonder, are his parents going to be there, are they not? Then he wouldn't know whether the occasion of his wedding was significant enough to repair the relationship he has with his parents. But let's imagine that his parents, in honor of his wedding, they, the wedding arouses, arouses in the parents a tremendous chukka for their child. What a significant day for the child. What love they have for their child. Whatever happened in the past is past. The basic, deep relationship they have, the love they have for their child is so great that they're willing to overlook what happened in the past and give the child another opportunity to be their child, to love them, to love him like a child, for him to love them like, like parents. And therefore, they prepare a whole feast for him. They prepare the wedding hall. When that chi- and, they, and they invite the child, they say, our son, come to your wedding. We've prepared it for you. Everything is set up for you. When a child walks into the wedding hall, he sees the tremendous money that his parents spent on the food, on the flowers, on the photographer, on the band, on all the beautiful arrangements for the wedding. He understands that he's a, tr- he's a loved child. He's cared about tremendously. Whatever happened in the past, whatever, whatever happened to create distance between his parents, it's not, it hasn't broken the relationship. It's, just, it's only given him an opportunity now to rectify it. Karash Baruch invites us at the beginning of Elul, he says, Alei Eli Ahara, come up to me. Whatever happened in the past, the Egel Hazav, I'm willing to overlook it. Come back to me. Do Teshuvah and come back to me. Karash Baruch Hu, every single year, this year he says to us, yes, obviously, there's something wrong with Kala Yisrael. We need to do Teshuva. But I'm inviting you. I mean, I'm inviting you, each and every one of you. Look at what you can do. I'm waiting for you to come back. It's a Hazmana. We all can respond to this invitation from Karash Baruch Hu. We all can look at ourselves and say, yes, Klai Yisrael has a lot of challenges. All of us have something we can do. Each of us individually can look at what we can, how we can improve. Each of us as members of Klai Yisrael can look at how we can improve, how we can relate to each other better, how, how we can relate to our families, to our communities, to all of Klai Yisrael to, to, to be misachet together. And by Ezra Hashem, we should take the opportunity of this hazmana, this invitation from Kaddish Baruch Hu, to improve ourselves, to to improve as individuals, to improve as a klal, to prepare ourselves for the great, for the great chasana of Yom Kippur and Be'ez Hashem, we should hear all from Karish Baruch Hu, Salachti Kid Varecha.